Welcome to Yankee Stadium for game two of a four-game series between the Red Sox and the New York Yankees. Well, these games certainly important for the Yankees trying to clinch at the very least the wild card scenario. They have a three and a half game lead. Astros in second with the Angels, Twins, and Indians on their heels heading into tonight's game two of the series. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, as always, joined by Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox baseball. Well, the Red Sox have now won four straight games, and last night a nice win and a big night for Jackie Bradley Jr. Uh, Don, he had a great night last night, both defensively and offensively for the Boston Red Sox. So we're going to start with the defense. Now, last night, Jackie was in left field here at Yankee State in the big part of the ballpark and he made a couple of great plays one going to his left as he crouches into the wall and then what later on in the ball game going to his right and you know it doesn't matter where you put this guy defensively he's just outstanding at every outfield position whether it be left field center field or right field he is that good and then of course he hits the home run later on in the ball game that goes up to left field and uh, Jackie you know what we're trying to figure out with him right now is what Jackie Bradley is going to show up offensively. That's the question. You know, there was a period of time where he got hot. He got over 300. Now he's back down in the 250s. And it's hard to judge him. It's really hard to gauge what he's going to do offensively. He has these hot streaks. Then he cools back off. And the average right now hovering around that 250 mark. So we still aren't sure. Or I'm still not sure what kind of offensive play he's going to be. But defensively, a superstar. Red Sox trying to win their fifth game in a row for the first time this season. Should be a pretty good pitching matchup here tonight from New York. Rick Porcillo, 8-14 with a 5.04 ERA up against Pineda, who's 12-8, 3.99. We're back with more right after this. Experience a new Audi A3 today. Dunkin' Donuts America runs on Dunkin'. Toyota's website for deals by Toyota.com. The Walk in theaters October 9th. Nissan gets a Nissan's ride of your life for exciting performance and bonus cash. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Digital Federal Credit Union. See what DCU can save you. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium as we get ready for game two of the four-game series between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Before we get started, let's send it down to Garrett Austin. Thanks, Don. Rusnik Castillo is out of the lineup again tonight. Interim manager Tori Lovello had an update on his status, as well as Ryan Hannigan's, who Lovello said is still having issues with his hand. He wants to play. He's eager to play. 
Um, the medical staff said that he could play. But the way I look at it is if we, if we need one more day today to finish the season, I'm going to take that. If I hear that there's a risk that he could injure himself today and then miss two or three more games, that's a no-brainer for me. I want everybody to stand up at the end of the year and be healthy and strong and finish the way um, we set out to. Could play if needed, emergency, in an emergency situation. Um, he wants to play. He's eager to play. Uh, but healing every day to the point where he's going to get some time most likely in Cleveland before New York. Um, it's been hard for him to not play. I know he wants to. But we got to be smart about him taking one particular swing and, and going backwards, and we're trying to get ahead of it. Well, the Yankees have taken the field tonight here from Yankee Stadium, so let's check out the Red Sox starting lineup tonight. It is brought to you by your Eastern Hyundai dealers. Leading it off and in center field is Mookie Betts with Dustin Pedroia at second base, batting second. Xander Bogarts at shortstop. David Ortiz, the DH, with Travis Shaw at first base. Brock Holt in right field tonight. Blake Swihart doing the catching with Devin Marrero at third base. And Jackie Bradley Jr. in left field rounds out the starting nine. The Yankees starting pitcher presented by New England Nissan dealers. Michael Pineda on the mound. His 26th start of the year comes in at 12 and 8. Just under a four earned run average at 3.99. 147 strikeouts in 151 innings. And opponents hitting at 275 against Pineda. Last time out a win against the White Sox. A six inning effort giving up eight hits and one run. Struck out six along the way. The Yankee defense is brought to you by DraftKings. They are 10th in the league with 90 errors on the season. Headley, De Gregorius, Dustin Ackley, and Greg Bird in the infield. Brett Gardner, Jacoby Ellsbury, Carlos Beltran in the outfield, and Brian McCann doing the catching for the Yankees. And Michael Pineda here working to Mookie Betts in the top of the first inning. Outfield straight away. And Betts will take the strike, and he's down 0-2. Mookie hitting it 292 coming in with 15 homers and 72 runs batted in. Very high that time at 93. Yeah, Pineda has been very good against the Red Sox this season. 2 0 with a 1.42 ERA. 4 2 lifetime against the Red Sox. It'll bounce in and it evens at two and two. Guy that's going to be around the strike zone does not walk very many guys at all. Last five starts. Look at the numbers. Three and oh, the 3.14 earned run average. And Mookie Betts has hit safely in each of his last nine games against the Yankees and you can make it ten. Down to the left field corner for Betts. He's headed for second base. Gardner will dig it out, but not before Betts is at second with a leadoff double to begin things here in the first inning. So a good start to the ball game here for the Red Sox. As we look at the umpiring crew tonight. Mike Everett has the plate with Tim Welke, the crew chief at first base. Todd Tickner is the umpire at second, and Tim Timmons at third. Weather conditions, well, it's a little dicey. Temperature 74 degrees. Breeze in from right at 7 miles per hour. Chance for rain. You can see there, Jerry, clearly that it could go either go left or right and miss us, but it looks like it is heading towards us. Now let's hope it goes left, John. West. Northwest. Now bats at second base to get it started tonight here in the first inning. So instantly, Pineda into the stretch and now dealing with Dustin Pedroia. Shows Bunt drops it down the first baseline. It'll go foul. Don't see Pedroia do that very often at all. Attempt a bunt, whether it be for a base hit or a sacrifice. I think that time bunting just to get the ball to the right side and get bets to third base. So Pedroia down 0 1. Totes a 294 average. 12 homers and 42 runs batted in. Pedroia 0 for 4 in the ballgame last night with a walk in game one of the series. And a ground ball base hit through the left side. Betts will take third base as Gardner gets it back in. 
And it's first and third with nobody out. Does not go to the right side this time. Takes it through the left side for a base hit. Yeah, one bunt to the right side. That didn't happen for him, so he gets a base hit to the left side between third and short. And Mookie Betts had to hold up for a second to make sure Gregorius didn't get to that ball. And has to be stopped at third base with nobody out. First and third, nobody out, and Xander Bogart's coming up. Xander had 325 to start the night with seven homers and 80 runs batted in. Bogart's with two hits in the ball game last night, including a double. Yankees infield, a double play depth here with nobody out in the first inning. On the ground, left side to the backhand goes Gregorius to second for one to first, not in time, run scores. And the Red Sox take a 1 0 lead. In from third is Mookie Betts, and Boston getting the game's first run. Again, that speed helping uh, Bogots down the first baseline because when this left the bat, it looked like it could have been a double play ball. Gregorius does everything right, the pivot man does everything right, but so does Bogots running hard down the line to stay out of the double play. That ball right in the heel of the glove and the transfer it took a little extra time to get it in the throwing hand. But Xander would have beat that anyway. So two down the runner at first and the shift on here for David Ortiz who had last night off in there for tonight's game. Where the fellow saying before the game last night just needed the night off and. Like a lot of players this stage of the season a lot of stuff hurts. David in there, 268, 36 home runs and 104 runs batted in. To right field as Beltron goes back onto the track, and that ball is off the wall. Kind of has played that as it gets by him on the ricochet. To third goes Bogarts on the double by David Ortiz. And Beltron started back kind of gliding, ends up over his head and off the wall. I'll tell you what, this is the time to jump off an Ada because he does not have very good stuff right now at all. It's a hanging breaking ball right there to David Ortiz. Actually, not that bad. It was to the outside part of the plate, and Ortiz just hooks it. And in this ballpark, that's very dangerous. Beltran uh, took his eye off, the, off that ball in a hurry. And it went right off the top of the wall. Looked like if he took it, taken another step, he might have had a chance to make a play on it. So second and third, one out, and it brings up Travis Shaw. Shaw batting out of the fifth spot. That's pretty much where he's been on a daily basis. Shaw last night with three hits in the ball game, going three for four, including a home run, two runs batted in. As he takes strike one on that outside corner. 280 overall, 12 home runs now, 32 runs batted in for the Red Sox first baseman. He's now started 28 of the last 29 Red Sox games, dating back to August 29th. Soft ground ball to Pineda who goes to the plate and safe at home coming in as Bogarts. So able to get in as Brian McCann thought he had him. And looks towards his dugout. Joe Girardi is going to check this out. We'll see. We'll talk about getting in the kitchen here or this pitch. Yeah, exactly right. And it was a very nice play by Pineda, the pitcher. I, I didn't think he had the movement to get that ball home, but he did. Now, was the foot in there before the tag? It looked to me on first look that it was. There's Pineda coming up the, the side on throw to the home plate. Is the tag there? Hmm. You know, that, that front foot may have come up high off the uh, plate. We'll see. Yeah, it almost looks like it's in the air when the tag is applied. Yeah, I agree, Don. And they're trying to figure out if they're going to challenge this right now. You weigh a couple of things here. Of course, a big play with the run, but you also get the challenge here in the first inning. Don't want to lose it, but we'll see. They are going to challenge. So Joe Girardi making the decision. Now they're going to check it out. We'll get another look. Now the question I have, did the front foot go over home plate? If it did, 
then there's a chance that he could be out. If it got home plate, he's safe. I'm seeing foot off the bag and the tag on the back foot. Yeah, and then the back foot comes sliding across home plate. I I still can't tell if the part of the front foot got the home plate. I can't tell. Showing it here on the big board at Yankee Stadium in center field. But umpire Mike Everett made the call. I can't. I can't tell. I really can't tell if that front foot hit the plate or not. If it did, he's safe. If it did not, he's out. The other question I have about this play, from a Red Sox point of view, McCann, in my opinion. Had his foot on that baseline before he had control of the baseball. Blocking the bath, which you cannot do. Exactly. Under the new rules, and Red Sox certainly could bring that up, that possibility up, should this get reversed. I, I, if we could look at it again, we could see where McCann's foot is before he has the baseball. And I believe it's right on the line in front of home plate. See McCann where his foot is? Blocking the plate. And he's safe, so they stay with it. Not overturn the Yankees' challenge and lose their challenge here in the first inning. Probably not conclusive enough to overturn that. So the Red Sox jump out to a 2 0 advantage. Runners at first and third with one out in the inning. There is Brock Holt batting out of the sixth spot for the Red Sox. So Boston jumping on top here tonight, right out of the gate on Michael Pineda. In there for a strike to Holt. Okay, 282 to start the night with two home runs, 44 runs batted in. Holt 0 for 4 in the game last night. And is 4 for his last 41 against the Yankees in the season series. He's had a tough time at the plate. As yes, it evens up now at 1 and 1. Overall, 302 with runners in scoring position. Even better since July the 22nd. Ortiz at third, Shaw at first. With one out in the inning. Yankees infield a double play depth. Holt fouls it off and is down one and two. Well, Xander Bogarts almost um, turns out to be a good slide, able to elude the tag. Uh, Brian McCann and get that second Red Sox run here in the first inning. Been a battle here for Michael Pineda right out of the gate tonight. Rolls it over foul, still one and two. And when you get a chance early to score runs off Pineda, uh, you've got to do it because, uh, you know, he's been very, very tough on the Red Sox as we highlighted. You see the breakdown of his pitches, a uh, very good slider, not too many change ups. Up and away, two and two. <laughs> Winning his last two starts at New York against the Mets and at home against Chicago. This one fouled off to the left over at City Field, that first win against the Mets. And and at home against the White Sox last time out. Six inning effort last time out, giving up only one run against the Mets in the 
outing previous she had given up no runs in five and a third and tonight already charged with two runs here in the first inning a little turnover fastball that time at 89 of Brock Holton holds able to follow it off This one is lined into right center field. A base hit for Holt from third base comes David Ortiz to third base. Head Shaw. Holt into second safely with a double. And the Red Sox take a 3 0 lead. A great hustle there by Brock Holt. It looked like it was going to be just a single, but he hustles all the way and turns it into a two base hit. Holt picks up his 45th RBI of the season. That's the slider from Pineda down. And Jacoby Ellsbury going to his left. Right there, and it's a, a good hustle play, an excellent hustle play by Brock Holt to get into second base. He knows Ellsbury does not throw all that well. We all know that, and he takes advantage of that. So the fast start for the Red Sox tonight on top, three to nothing here in the first inning. And perhaps not done yet with runners at second and third. And still just one out in the inning, and you got Blake Swihart coming up. Pineda trying to find his bearings here in the first inning. Swihart at 269 with three homers and 26 runs batted in. Foul back to the screen for strike one. Swihart on a three game hitting streak right now. You see the numbers with runners in scoring position, and since July 30th, 419. A base hit here last night, going one for four in the ball game. Foul back to the screen again, 0 and 2. And fastball at 93 miles an hour. On deck, Devin Marrero got his first major league home run last night. Pineda has given up four hits and three runs so far here in the first inning. Swihart will take a ball, one and two. Swihart has only faced Pineda twice in his career, 0 for 2. Shaw at third, Holt at second, with one out here in the first inning. Backing out here is Swihart. 21 first inning pitches so far for Pineda, dealing with his seventh batter of the inning. Outside, two and two. Now the command and control is not there early for Pineda. Velocity was in the last pitch 94, but way outside. Now headed out is McCann here to talk to Pineda. Well, follow the Red Sox for the rest of the season with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet today. Mike Swihart here in a battle with Michael Pineda. We have runners at second and third and one out. Swihart to right field and deep. Back goes Beltron and that ball is gone. Home run. Blake Swihart with a three run shot. The Red Sox take a six nothing lead. 
huge first inning for the Red Sox who have now scored six times with one out in the first. Now give credit to the Red Sox. They've got a pitcher out there right now Pineda, Pineda that has nothing. I mean he has nothing here in the first inning and credit the Red Sox for jumping all over him. Fastball inside part of the plate. Swihart cleans it out. Picks up his fourth home run of the season. The Red Sox with six runs here in the first inning off a guy that has been very, very tough on the Red Sox this season and in the past. Well, in honor of David Ortiz's 500 home runs, All Town will double their $500 donation to Boston Children's Hospital. All Town is New England's premier healthier convenience retailer. Well, for Blake Swihart, his fourth home run of the year. And the Red Sox jumping out to the 6 nothing advantage. Now Devin Marrero standing in, eighth member of the Red Sox to bat here in the first inning. Fly ball foul off to the right out of play. Marrero getting that first career home run last night, hitting at 286. Two RBI since coming up. Right hander Chris Martin up in the pen now for New York. They have action. Foul back to the screen. 0 and 2. That one flying as well. Saw the ball go back to the screen. Didn't realize he had lost the handle of the bat, too. Yeah, and those very expensive seats behind the Red Sox dugout. No two pitch. On the ground left side to Gregorius at shortstop. His throw is in time for the second out. Well, the pitching line for Pineda brought to you by Lexus. Two thirds of an inning so far. Five hits, six runs. Hasn't walked anybody, hasn't struck anybody out. He's 27 pitches deep into an ineffective first inning. Jackie Bradley Jr., ninth member of the Red Sox to bat here in the inning. And a foul ball down by the shoe tops for strike one. 254 the average. 10 homers, 42 runs batted in. One for two in the ball game last night with a home run for Jackie Bradley Jr. Down 0-2. Bradley's home run last night gave the Red Sox a 4 1 lead with his two run shot in the seventh inning. Oh. That's a pretty good pitch there by Pineda. Top of the strike zone, inside part of the plate, but not called by Mike Everett. In the air, down the left field line, it'll make its way foul. Why are a big part of this first inning a three run home run? And Pineda trying to get out of this inning, get through this inning. One, two. Fly ball to left field, sent pretty deep. Gardner going back. It'll take him to the track, and he reaches up to make the catch. Pineda does get through the inning, but he gives up six first inning runs.
ahead to the bottom of the first inning. We check out the New York Yankees starting lineup brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Jacoby Ellsbury at the top of that lineup in center field with Brett Gardner in left. Alex Rodriguez, the DH, with Brian McCann doing the catching in the cleanup spot with Carlos Beltran in right. Dustin Ackley at second base, bat six. Chase Headley at third base. Greg Bird at first base. And D.D. Gregorius at shortstop, batting ninth. The Red Sox starting pitcher presented by your local New England Audi dealers. Rick Porcello on the hill for his 27th start of the year. 8 and 14. With a 5.04 earned run average. 134 Ks for Porcello. Right hander deals and gets it in there for strike one. Lost last time out. Pitched fairly well though. Seven innings. Scattered 11 hits. Three runs, two earned, and struck out eight while walking one against the Rays on Wednesday. Ellsbury at 262, seven home runs, 33 runs batted in. Now Rick Porcello. September the 1st against the Yankees took the loss. Pitched well though on that outing. He's from Morristown, New Jersey. Still resides there and here's a base hit to left. Bradley over to play it. It's going to get by him and into the corner. Ellsbury's still running and he'll get to second base and round it. So Ellsbury trying to answer here in the bottom of the first inning for the six runs that the Red Sox scored in the top of the inning. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They're 11th in the league with 95 errors on the season. Devin Marrero will be at third base. And the Bogots the shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second. And Travis Shaw, the first baseman, left to right. Jackie Bradley Jr., Mookie Betts, and Brock Holt, and Blake Swihart doing the catching for Rick Porcello. Well, Brett Gardner coming up here. Some trouble for Bradley Jr. Yeah, if it gets by him, but not very far by him. It would have been a double anyway for Jacoby Ellsbury. Right now, Bradley's thinking about keeping him off third base. So Ellsbury with a double, Gardner the batter, and he'll take it to right field and a base hit there. Ellsbury to third and it's first and third with nobody out the Yankees aggressive here in the bottom of the first inning on Rick Porcello and Gardner jumps on a high fastball on time from Porcello gets the barrel of the bat on top of the baseball and puts it some top spin on it as it lines out to Brock Holt nobody out they're not going to take the chance of scoring Jacoby especially down by six runs this early in the ballgame First and third, nobody out. And Alex Rodriguez checking in. 252, 32 home runs, 85 runs batted in for the Yankees DH. A Rod with six home runs in his last 23 games. Swing and a miss there, and it evens at one and one. Now Porcello would love a ground ball right here. Minimize the damage in the first inning, get a couple of outs, but give up a run. Alex Spear of the Boston Globe pointing out the road earned run average for Rick Porcello. Working here tonight at Yankee Stadium. Fouled off one and two. Good sinker that time by Porcello going down and in on Rodriguez. The two seamer right here comes back down and on right on top of it is Rodriguez. Look at the arsenal for Porcello. 66% of the time fastballs, 25% breaking balls, and 9% changeups. Away for ball two. On deck is Brian McCann. A Rod strikes out. Tough pitch right on the corner, and Alex not buying it from Mike Ever, the home plate umpire. 
I had questions ever about the call, but it was a borderline, and I think it was a strike. Certainly a tough pitch to take with two strikes on. You don't want to leave it in the hands of the umpire. That's a nasty pitch right there by Porcello. Again, coming back, a comebacker. So one out first and third and Red Sox on the right side here in a shift on McCann. McCann coming in hitting at 237 but good power numbers 26 home runs 92 runs batted in for the Yankees catcher. Batting here with Ellsbury at third Gardner at first and one out. That is outside. Two and zero. Oh. I think he's using John Ryan Murphy and Brian McCann, two catchers used this year. Saw so Murphy in last night's game. Runner goes. The throw from Swyart is going to be late. Stolen base for Gardner. And lots of speed on the base pass right now for New York with Gardner and Ellsbury and Gardner steals second base. Yeah, even down by six this early if they feel they can get a good jump, especially guys like Ellsbury and Gardner, they got to go. Those are the two guys in the lineup that run. That's number 20 on the season for Gardner. Nice clear path to second base for Swihart, but too good of a jump at first base. On the ground with a shift on. Bogarts will go to first base for the out there, and in from third comes Ellsbury, and the Yankees are on the board. It's now six to one. And the shift on as Gardner takes third base scoring is Ellsbury and the Yankees are on the board. Now that's where the stolen base comes in big because uh, you know if that didn't happen that would have been a double play to end the inning. Instead with the shift on it becomes just one run and the Red Sox pick the second out of the inning up. So two down in the inning Gardner at third and Carlos Belcher on the batter and he'll take it the other way to left field down the line and. This is going to get in and one hop the wall from third scoring is Gardner to second base with an RBI double goes Beltron and it's now six to two Boston as the Yankees get two back here so far in the bottom of the first inning. Now you look at a couple of guys in this lineup have had great success against Porcello and Beltron is one of those 467 coming into the game and he just takes that fastball to the opposite field. You see where Bradley's playing this ball's going to slice way away from him. And another run across for the Yankees. So plenty of scoring here in the first inning. So two down, Beltron at second base, and it brings up Dustin Ackley, the former Seattle Mariner. 239 homers and 26 runs batted in. Bogats was originally in a shift. And now has moved back to his traditional spot at shortstop. Ackley's been playing on a regular basis for the Yankees. Did not play in last night's game. Spent time on the DL, the right lumbar strain. Fired from Seattle at the end of July, right before the trade deadline. Been a Mariner's entire career until that trade. He's appeared in the games at first base, second base, left field, center field, and right field in his major league career. Popped up foul ground. Marrero headed over towards the seats as Marrero will not have a play. So 
one of the chance here for Dustin Ackley. Of course the Yankees wearing the number eight and Yogi Berra's funeral was today many of the Yankees attending. Many former Yankees attending as well and of course they wear the number eight on the jersey. To right field and deep. Brock Holt going back, and that ball is gone. A two run home run for Dustin Ackley. His 10th of the year, and here come the Yankees. It is now 6 to 4. Starting pitchers having their problems here in the first inning tonight from New York. Yeah, both guys, uh, Pineda and Porcello, having big time problems in the first inning. Ackley jumps on the fastball that's uh, just a little bit above the belt and he hooks it out of Yankee Stadium into the first couple of rows. So Carl Willis back to the dugout. Red Sox had a 6 nothing advantage. It is now 6-4. Nick Porcello's pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket. Two thirds of an inning, four hits, four runs. Has not walked anybody, struck out a batter. 20 pitches deep into that pitching line. Here is Chase Headley. He'll take strike one. That was the 25th home run that Porcello has allowed this season. That by far leads the Red Sox down. Strike two. Well, he's staked a six nothing advantage quickly gives four back. And zips one inside for a ball to Headley. Six game hitting streak for the Yankees third baseman coming in at 350 along the way. And a swing and a miss to end the inning second strikeout for Porcello but the Yankees score four times six to four at the end of one Red Sox on top. House of Blues in Boston celebrate the best of New England sports with a star studded collection of current and former sports legends, including Ray Bork, Doug Flutie, and Louis Tion. Tickets start at just $75 and can be purchased at tickets.com slash Globies. That was a wild one out of the gate, 6 4. Red Sox have the lead as they come to bat here in the second inning. And the question becomes what pitch is going to be able to settle down in this game? 
Red Sox sent nine men to the plate in the first inning, scored six times on five hits. That gets time as Pineda was about to deal. Swing and a miss on a pitch headed downward. 0 and 2. That's the good slider right there from Pineda. The one that starts out over the plate finishes off the outside edge. Down the right field line, it is headed foul and back into the seats. Jason Veritek in the house. Quite a battle for that ball, I think, at first, but it seems like they've worked it out okay. Everybody's all right with it. Yeah, making friends too, you know? That's that's the big thing. <laughs> Red Sox fan, Yankee fan. Guy's got to pull his pants up, though. <laughs> One two pitch. And that's going to miss outside. Two and two. Beneda had to throw 32 first inning pitches. But his team gets him four back in a hurry in the bottom of the first inning. Top of the order batting now. Pedro will be next as the pitch is in there for strike three. Betts didn't like it. it looked like could have been a little bit low. First strikeout for Pineda. Yeah, a couple of pitches. Uh, a Rod didn't like his. Betts didn't like his. Slide it down and just barely touching the bottom of that strike zone. Make insurance. Great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. So one down here in the second inning brings up Dustin Pedroia, who singled to left field in the first inning. Takes strike one. Pineda in search of his 13th win of the year coming in at 12 and 8. That'll bounce in to even the count of one and one. Well, he's now reached base safely in 38 straight games against the American League East. Longest Red Sox single season streak since 1985. Wade Boggs. On the ground to third. Headley's got it. And Pedroia is out number two of the inning. So Pineda's got the first two outs here in the second inning. And it'll bring up Xander Bogarts. Reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Picked up an RBI. Rick Borsillo giving up four runs in the first inning. See if he can calm down here the rest of the way. Xander Bogart's 192 hits now tied with Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros. American League leaders. That low strike is going to be called tonight, it appears. 192 hits, one hit from tying Williams for the Red Sox record for a player who's age 22 or younger. Alex Spear of the Boston Globe checking in. Two one pitch. Xander to right field. Out there is Carlos Beltran waiting. So Pineda has a much better second inning. Red Sox down in order, but on top, six to four.
vodka, rum on Duncan, because our coffee is consistently smooth and delicious. Boston Red Sox run on Duncan. Baseball operations president, Dave Dombrowski, Frank Wren alongside. Mike Hazen is also in that booth. As a breaking ball is in there for a strike. Porcello hoping to calm down here in the second inning. Greg Bird leading it off. D.D. Gregorius and Jacoby Ellsbury expected here in the second inning. Bird has been playing at first base in the absence of Mark Teixeira. Yeah, putting up some pretty good home run numbers here. Early going of his career, 10. 29 runs batted in since joining the Yankees. But no doubt they missed Teixeira. He certainly swings it from both sides of the plate. Red Sox infield here shifting on Bird. And he fouls it off the other way, 2-2. Two and two. Keep it tight to the infield. Roy a step or two on the outfield grass. Rip foul down the right field line out of play. Hit distribution. Thirtieth pitch. And it's headed out towards left center field and deep. Back goes Bradley Jr. And he's got it sized up shy of the warning track out there for the first out of the inning. Now for every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings or the Sox get a save, CVS Pharmacy will make a donation to Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 commitment once again this season. CVS Pharmacy, the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. One out here in the second inning for D.D. Gregorius. Uh, 266 with nine homers and 54 runs batted in for the Yankees shortstop. Strike called and it's a ball and a strike. Gorgeous acquired by the Yankees from the Arizona Diamondbacks in a three team deal back in December. This last offseason. Top of the order waiting on deck in Jacoby Ellsbury as Gregorius has time as he digs in. And strikes out. Rick Porcello gets his third K in the second out here, the second inning. Let's well, time now for our MLB Memory Bank moment presented by Bank of America, October 18th of 2004. Of course, game four of the 04 ALCS. Dave Roberts pinch runs for Kevin Millar, steals second base off Mariano Rivera. And then, of course, Miller singles to score Roberts and force extra innings. And most famous stolen base. In Red Sox history, without question. This one is fouled back to the screen for strike one. Ellsbury with a double in the first inning, came around to score the first Yankees run of the night. Now, ground ball to short. Bogarts with a miscue. And reaching at first is Jacoby Ellsbury. Now, what caused that error by Bogarts is the fact that he knew Jacoby Ellsbury could run, and that that's intimidating to an infield. You see a couple of steps, and he's trying to rush the ball out of his glove because of Ellsbury's speed. I mean, he's in good position right there to make the play, but he starts to come up too soon because he knows he has to quickly get that ball to first base. The eleventh error of the season for Bogarts. So a base runner with two down here for New York and here is Brett Gardner a single a stolen base a run scored. On his first at bat here in the first inning now at bat number two comes in the second inning. Looked like Borsello much like 
Pineda was going to be able to have a one two three second inning after a very bad first inning. But the miscue at short for Bogarts extends this inning and gives Gardner a chance. 21 steals for Ellsbury this season. Those numbers are down. Of course, uh, out with injuries for quite a while this year. Ball one to Gardner. Breeze has picked up here kind of a swirling win. Strike called and it's one and one. Center fielder Mookie Betts over towards right center. A lot of room out there in left center here on Brett Gardner. Pass to left center field anyway. 399 to the alley. Throw to first with Ellsbury standing on the back. Ball up and away. And Porcello giving up a two run home run to Dustin Ackley as part of the four run first inning for New York. 40th pitch, and Gardner will take it for a strike. That time the changeup from Porcello, 83 miles an hour on the outside part of the plate. Location for Cello, keeping it away from uh, Brett Gardner. Throw to first, and that one almost got away. Shaw had to kind of reach around there to grab that. Not that big a lead that time for Ellsbury at first base. Runner goes as Gardner fouls it off. Ellsbury that time taken off on the 2-2 yeah. pitch. He had kind of a walking lead towards second base. He never really was stopped by Porcello. And that's what he's been trying to do. He's been trying to time his lead to Porcello's move. On the ground right side to Pedroia. He'll go to first for the out that will end the inning. So the error not costly as it turns out by Bogart. 6 4 Boston.
noon, Pittsburgh visits Virginia Tech. Then at 3.30 on Nesson Plus, the BC Eagles take on the Duke Blue Devils. Saturday afternoon, tune in for your college football fix on Nesson and Nesson Plus. Now we head to the top of the third inning. Red Sox with a 6-4 advantage over the Yankees. David Ortiz deleted off here in the 30 at a double of Michael Pineda in the first inning. And he has now retired five Red Sox in a row. And gets strike one over that outside corner. Shift on here for David. Dustin Ackley staying in the infield here as D.D. Gregorius, the shortstop, is in short right. I guess you're going better arm here, Jerry, in right field, as far as Gregorius being in right. Yeah, I think so. And 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 their charts may show uh, that uh, you know a lot of times you want to put your best infielder where most ground balls are hit. This one's cut off by Bird, who is headed towards Gregorius, but covering it first is Pineda for the first out. Now, weather a concern here tonight from New York and our very latest look here Jerry what, what does this tell you well, that tells me that it's going west uh, of the city uh, of uh, of uh, the Bronx here and uh, Manhattan it's uh, I think we're going to miss it Don I really do okay at least uh, for now I'll give you an update in, in just a little while stay with us on Stormcast next stay safe Jerry you too on the <laughs> elements Don <laughs> one out here in the third it brings up Travis Shaw So uh, reaching on a fielder's choice in the first inning that is pitch 50 of the night already for Pineda. He was now retired six in a row. Sure. DraftKings.com is paying out over 300 million dollars this baseball season. DraftKings given out 34 million dollars to Boston residents alone since the site launched. Get your free entry into a one day fantasy baseball contest today using promo code Nesson. On the ground into the shift on the right side, and it is Gregorius throwing to first base in time to get Travis Shaw. And just get back to that point you asked me about the shift. You know, a lot of times, at least the way the Red Sox try to do it, and I'm sure other teams do, they see the chart on where guys hit the ball the most. And uh, we saw Gregorius make that play. They want their best defensive infielder in that spot, unless the double plays in order. Then you try to get the second baseman and shortstop together in the middle. So that time it worked out fine. They had their best infielder exactly where the ball was hit. Well, no shift this time for Brock Holt with two down here in the third inning. Oh, the double and a run driven in as part of the six run first inning for Boston. On the ground, Pineda will feel, plant, and throw, and able to a good stretch to get it is Bird, and they retire Holt. Eight in a row now retired by Pineda. 6 4 Boston.
begin with Garrett. Thanks, Don. Interim manager Tori Lavello had an unusual workout partner this morning, President Obama. President Obama has been staying at the same hotel as the team and was at the gym when Lavello went to work out today. Lavello said he went up, introduced himself, and they had a nice baseball conversation, and that President Obama was very normal, and they even took a photo together. Guys, Lavello said it was a very exciting moment, and he had the best workout of his life. Now, Jerry, you like to spend time in the lobby. Did you see President Obama? No, actually, I was sitting with a delegation today. I had no idea where they were from, Don. You saw me in the yes. lobby. Yep. They were speaking Spanish, mm -hmm. but I'm not exactly sure where they were from. I, I saw the motorcade leave today for Rapotas, and um, it was quite a motorcade. <laughs> it was unbelievable just going from the hotel to the U.N., but uh, security very, very tight in our hotel. I'm surprised they let you sit in the lobby for as long as you did because you've been there in the last two days now for around, combined the last two days, six hours. Well, I have this to is be. down to I, third. Marrero will throw to first. Very suspicious-looking gentleman like yourself, sitting in the lobby for six hours you know, with your pass on, your credentials. Well, they finally asked me, you know, why, why are you here? And I said, because I'm a president also of Red Sox Nation. <laughs> so that answers that question. Takes right? care of that. I, I mean, I don't have security like right. the president does, but I am the president of Red Sox Nation. I have been for quite a long time now. Right. So some of that Secret Service was also there for me. Very little of it. There's a ground ball to first base and over to cover is Porcello. Getting more ground ball outs now. Two down in the inning. And I, I don't know who I was sitting next to today, but they, they seemed very important and uh, they were speaking Spanish. I could pick up bits and pieces and it didn't sound like politics they were talking about. It sounded you, like breakfast. Did you have a chance to meet any of the um, Secret Service? I mean, anybody? Uh, I, I have, actually have a an acquaintance that uh, is in the Secret Service. So uh -huh. I asked uh, one of the Secret Service gentlemen as we check into the hotel if this particular person was on this detail. Yep. He said, well, he says, I don't know. He says, there's 3,000 of us here. 3,000? 3, 3, wow. 3,000 Secret Service. It seems like there's that many in the lobby. Yeah. From the <laughs> lobby's packed. I mean, it really is. It's... Uh, there's a lot of people, and somebody came down today. I have no idea who it was, but it was somebody had to be big because it was, you know, they, they just stopped all the elevators, and he came out with a bunch of people around him, and I, I couldn't see who it was. Now, I saw Tori as I was headed out for lunch, and he had just gotten done with his workout, and he showed me the picture. He was disappointed that the flash didn't go off, apparently, on the picture, but still, I think it's a pretty good picture. Yeah, it is, and, and you know, I'm surprised a little bit that, that they allow other people in there while yeah. he is working out. He said there were a lot of other guys in there that were there. Some were dressed up as Secret Service people. Some were there that were not dressed up as Secret Service and also working out, but he was very well protected, but not all that well protected. If Tori Lovello could get right up and close to him and talk to him about baseball. Yeah. Well, so, there you have it. It's a moment you won't forget, right? No. I remember our visit to the White House last year. There's a swing and a miss and striking out Carlos Beltran to end things here in the third. A 1 2 3 inning for Porcello, 6 4 Boston.
innovation doesn't just mean making life simpler. It means finding new technology that puts your needs first. See what's new at easternbank.com. Here, your first Eastern Bank. All trains leading to Yankee Stadium tonight where the Red Sox have a 6-4 lead. That is the four train. I guess that's the one you take if you're going back to where we uh, we stay. And if I heard train. correctly, it's only like 15, 20 minutes away, but it takes us to like an hour by car. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, it seems uh, we should be taking I'm the train. I'm afraid to take the train because I, I would probably end up somewhere in Philadelphia. I, I don't. I'm not good <laughs> with you know those train signs. Like get off here, and I, I don't know where I am. You know, in the city. What is this? It's a home run. Blake Swihart. <laughs> Free run shot. We're talking about trains and yeah, a home run. I don't know what happened there. That was a. Uh... <laughs> Here's a ground ball to first base. Bird has got it himself. He'll tag the bag. And yeah, Swihart retired this time. Actually, it's a couple of home runs uh, that made this game uh, a big first inning. Swihart's three-run home run, Ackley's two-run home run for the uh, for the Yankees. Nine in a row retired by Pineda. Here is Devin Marrero, who's grounded out to shortstop, 0 for one. Well, Pineda certainly settled down as. All starters really have after both having very difficult first innings. 32 pitches in the first four Pineda. Giving up six runs on five hits. Yeah, one of those guys, you know, if you get him early, you got to put some points on the board like the Red Sox did because he can turn it around and get very tough on you. Swing and a miss, one and two. That's that biting slider right there by Benedo. Starting on the plate, finishing off the plate. Nasty on right-handers. Taking a little stroll in behind the mound. Rolled over a foul over by the Red Sox dugout. Two balls, two strikes to Devin Marrero. Time call. Pineda taking a long time in between pitches. In the string right now of nine in a row, retired by the right hander. Fouled at the plate, still two and two. Stay tuned for Red Sox final presented by Uno's Adam Eck and Steve Lyons to break down the American League wildcard race. Marrero kind of got jammed and pops it up towards Ackley at second base and he'll put it away two down. And that'll bring up Jackie Bradley Jr. getting his second look at Pineda. He flied out to the warning track in left field first time up. Ball that Brett Gardner caught on the track and in front of the wall. Fastball at 92. Shifting on the right side are the Yankees here on Bradley. Now grabbing the inside corner for strike two.
Well, like most people, uh, trying to elevate that fastball where they have two strikes on Bradley. That time he's not chasing it. Tried it again. Takes off the changeup, wants the slider. Bradley will lift it in the air, popped up left side. It's Chase Headley into short left. Look out, and he'll make the catch in front of Gardner. That ends the inning. That is 11 in a row, retired by Pineda, 6 to 4 Boston. make good things happen watch how good things are happening to local people at easternbank.com slash good things happen radio city i could actually see that from my hotel room <laughs> some comments from the truck that you don't spend a lot of time in your hotel room so how do you know uh, Tell you something. I'm very familiar with Radio City. Every every winter, when I was a kid, we used to go up there to watch the Christmas show huh. with the Rockettes. Yep, yep. I heard there were some Rockettes here at the ballpark tonight. There's a ground ball right side <laughs> as Pedroia throws to first base and Dustin Ackley retired four to three. So five in a row now retired by Porcello, and it'll bring up Chase Headley. I think the ones you're talking about the ones I used to watch. <laughs> Down low for ball one. Shifting here on Headley on the right side. And Porcillo has not allowed a hit since the first inning. There was an error at shortstop. He's retired everybody else since. There's a ground ball right side. Bogart's laying it out and from his backside. Throw will be late. This could not get turned around. It is a base hit and he is slow to get up, kind of grabbing his back as he got up. That was kind of an awkward dive uh, right there by, by Bogart. So, I mean, he did make the dive and got to the baseball, but never could get himself under control to make the throw to first base. There's the dive and then he rolls over. That's an awkward position right there to try to make a throw at. 
grabbing his back, the middle of his back. So we'll keep an eye on that as the game progresses. Yeah, it looks like you did it on the throw, I yeah. think. So one out, one on. Greg Bird, the batter. And the pitch in there for strike one. Bird flied out to Jackie Bradley Jr. in left field in the second inning. To center field. Betts going back, and Mookie gets there backpedaling for the second out of the inning. As Headley back to first with now two down in the inning. I don't know, Don. I'm going to ask you this question. What do you think? Uh, we've seen we've seen Betts now in center field all year. Yep. Saw him for a small sample size in right field. To me, he looks much, much more comfortable in center field than he did in right now. I know he's still learning out there. Yep. But he to me looks like a center fielder. I think so too. I think you know I agree with you. I do think that it was too small of a sample size right. though really to tell and right. I think he was starting to get used to it. And perhaps with time he could be a very good right fielder. I do think though that with Jackie Bradley Jr. you can play him anywhere. Yeah. And I see the I'm starting to change my yeah. my tune on this a little bit. Okay. Originally I thought you know Jackie should probably be the center fielder moving forward. I think I'm switching on that. I think Mookie okay. should be the center fielder and Jackie should play the big right field. Okay. Stronger throwing arm. Yeah. You really, and we've heard this many times, it's not a bad idea to have two center fielders at Fenway Park. Right. One in right and one in center. I think right. we found that out with Shane Victorino playing in right field. Gold Glove Award winner, 2013. Ex excellent point, yes. And we're seeing it here in this series. We're seeing Bradley in left field, which is the big part of yep. the stadium here at Yankee Stadium. Jackie clearly has the better throwing arm than Mookie. Mookie, a former infielder. Well, the question is, where does Ruznay Castillo fit in the picture? And I think my biggest question, Jerry, is going to be, what happens in the offseason as far as trades go? I mean, that's the thing. You got these guys, and we're talking about where they're going to be, but are they all going to be here next year? I think the toughest thing right now, you know, and we've watched this over the last. Up and in, and Gregorius gets hit. On the elbow, it looked like he's got the pad on there, but. Didn't sound good. No, it didn't. Right off the elbow. Didn't do very much to get that elbow out of the way, did he? Listen. Getting back to what we were talking about, I would find it very, very hard, you know, because we have seen some success here in the last, what, six weeks since these young guys have been playing? Yep. And I would find it very difficult right now if I was evaluating of what I've been watching, whether you go into the next season banking on that young outfield. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly don't know. We know what they can all do. We all know their strengths, and we've, we do, but we don't know what strengths are over the course of the season, with the exception of bets. High fly ball to right field. It has Brock Holt going back onto the track at the wall, and he makes the catch right at the wall. No more room for him as he makes the grab. As Ellsbury gives it a ride, but he's out number three. The Red Sox have a 6-4 lead through four. Brock Holt, good concentration.
Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. Text one for yes, text two for no. Text your answer to 536-536. Message and data rates may apply. One message per vote. Visit Nesson.com slash terms for terms and conditions and privacy policy. No. Not even close. No. You think it is from a sound perspective as this one is driven to left field back goes Gardner and this is going to be over his head and gone. Mookie Betts takes it out of the yard for his 16th home run Pineda frustrated. That breaks up a string of 11 in a row retired by Pineda and puts the Red Sox on top seven to four. Now once again Mookie showing that very quick bat. As the ball comes back on the field thrown back by the fans. Boy, a slider that just didn't do anything, just spinning up the home plate and bets all over it. And you know something bad's going to happen when you make a pitch like that. You said a bad word. Dustin Pedroia now bats so with the base is empty. Now Mookie with his 16th home run of the year. We talked a lot about Xander Bogarts and him kind of becoming a power hitter over time. Uh, do you see the same? What do you think with Mookie at some point? Yeah, He's talking I, about I, 25, think talking, I think you're talking 20 to 25. Yep. I really do. We were talking last night about where the outfielders may end up. To me, the first thing that has to be addressed is pitching. Starting pitching and the bullpen needs to be addressed. Now, how do you go about doing that? Is it a free agent situation or are you going to have to trade one of these guys yeah. to help you get there? And that's the question. Up the middle and out of the reach of Ackley into center field. I agree with you. I, I, I think that uh, that is obviously the number one priority is the pitching. If you're 14th in the league in pitching, and that has to be addressed both in the starting rotation. And especially in the bullpen. And I think you may be able to go both ways through free agency and trades. The question is, who do you trade? And to me, of the three outfielders right now, if Castillo had any value, that would be my choice because you would have loaned a lot of money. And we don't know what he's going to do. I mean, you can't, you, we really don't know what he's going to do. And I don't know if you feel any differently, but, you know, in a sample size that we've seen, there's talent there, but will that talent ever get any better than what it is right now? And if you are going to do what you're saying and what you'd like to do, perhaps, is trade him, you are going to have to eat a large amount of money. To I think do so. That. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're going to have to decide whether or not they can do that. Now, the other thing, the other question is Jackie Bradley. We talked a little bit, touched upon yep. this in the open tonight. Which offensive Jackie Bradley are we going to see? Are we going to see something in the middle? You know, it's either been way down or it's been way good. You know, there's a point there this season where he's hitting over 300 and swinging the bat like crazy. And he said, maybe this is it. All of a sudden, he's back coming into the game tonight at 254. So, I mean, you know, he swings an average. Where is he going to end up if he plays every single day? Is he going to be a 270 hitter? You can handle that. He's going to hit some home runs. And you know he's going to play great defense. It will certainly be a very interesting offseason as Jackie Bradley Jr. Could be a part of what will be interesting of that offseason as a check to first base and back is Pedroia. Dustin with a base hit back up the middle. Home run and a base hit in this inning for the Red Sox off Pineda. Here's a broken back grounder to short could be two. Gregorius touches second, throws to first for the double play. Now that's the kind the shortstop like where they don't even have to flip the ball on second base when they're on their way. They're moving towards second. They just catch the ground ball, tag the bag. And you got yourself a double play. He's so close right there. He doesn't need help from a second baseman. A couple of crow hop steps, tag the bag, make the throw. Well, two down here in the fifth inning, and it brings you up David Ortiz. David doubled in the first inning, came around to score, grounded out to first base in the third, one for two. Into the shift it goes, and it is Gregorius, the shortstop, who throws it in to get David Ortiz. A home run for Mookie Betts, adds to the Red Sox lead on top seven to four.
left-hander to win three games against the Yankees in a single season, all before turning 23 since Babe Ruth in 1917. Did it five times. Twisted tea is the hard iced tea. It tastes like real iced tea. Be a little twisted. Eduardo yesterday, six innings, the one run on seven hits through 97 pitches. Able to get the victory in his 10th of the year. Red Sox have a 7 4 lead to the bottom of the fifth inning. We go. Brett Gardner leading it off here against Rick Porcello. And Gardner showing bunt and jumps back out of the way, down and in. Gardner single to right in the first, grounded out to second base in the second inning. Marcelo's only given up one hit since the first inning. And that's in the right field. And probably my fault. <laughs> they sit there for Brett Gardner to begin things here in the fifth inning. Sorry, Rick. Well, don't miss WB Mason next innings live right after the game. Adam Eck and Steve Lyons will break down tonight's game. You'll hear from Rick Porcello. Whatever, whenever, wherever. Who but WB Mason? Second hit of the night for Gardner, who's now two for three. And it brings up Alex Rodriguez. One for two in the ball game. And Rod striking out looking in the first, grounded out to third base in the third. Arod taps it foul, a ball and a strike now to Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez, one of four players in baseball history to homer both as a teenager and as a 40 year old. Rusty Staub, Gary Sheffield, and Ty Cobb also all doing it. And Arod this year with 32 round trippers. Swing and a miss, one and two. I don't see what the big deal that is. I hit a home run as a teenager, and I hit one uh, as a 60-year-old. Really, I don't remember the 60-year-old one. It was a wiffle ball game in Colorado. Uh, oh, okay. An indoor stadium. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> Cleaned it out. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I was pretty sure that you weren't even playing at 40, nonetheless 60. No, but I did hit one at 60. Plus, everybody will say it's in the light air in Colorado, but right. the, the ball was crushed. <laughs> <laughs> and you said wiffle ball, right? Did I hear that right? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> yes. Underhand wiffle ball. That's quite a bit different. Yeah. Throw to first and diving back is Gardner. Did you Cadillac it around the bases or did you even run the bases? No, we didn't have to run. Uh, okay. I'm excused from running because I get out of breath. <laughs> So I don't have to run the bases in those games. This is on the ground to third base. Marrero will go to second base for one. Pedroia to first, and they turn it around the horn. And coming in hard at second base was Gardner. But Pedroia is still able to get it done. Two downs. See, the thing is, a second baseman there, you know you've got time because Aaron doesn't run well. So you, as long as you can, you can clear Gardner, you're going to get the double play. And Gardner, of course, very fast, gets down there in a hurry. Pedroia has to back toward the outfield part of uh, go toward left field. As you can see, back off the bag. That 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 lets the bag protect him a little bit, and he still has time to go to first base to get the uh, Rodriguez. Remind me next inning to tell you a little story about this wiffle ball game. Two down here in the inning. Brian McCann taking strike two. K 
and has grounded out twice once to short once to first Red Sox in the shift on the right side. And a swing and a miss kind of a feeble swing there he's going to run but uh, he'll be thrown out on the strikeout that ends the fifth inning. Red Sox have a seven four lead. Let's take a look at the Red Sox box score. Accomplishments on October 20th at Aganis Arena. For more info on the event, visit TravisRoyFoundation.org. Those raindrops, they are. Seven to four. Red Sox have the lead over the Yankees. Kevin Lamanowitz giving us the radar, courtesy of Fox 25, and uh, yeah, we're still okay. It looks like he's trying to hook to the right a little bit, but uh, hey, we're okay. We got five innings, and the Red Sox have the lead. Here is Travis Shaw standing in as the Yankees in the shift on the right side. And this one lying foul back out of play. Okay, so the Swift football game I play in, right? It's <laughs> kind of become kind of an annual event. Is it a league or just a game? I mean, just a game. Yeah. People come from all, all over the country to play in this. And it's out in Colorado and it's in a like a tennis type stadium that they built the mini Fenway Park. Yeah. So the whole idea of the game is fun. And, you know, the ladies get up, the wives, you know, on the hand, you know, the, the guys get up just a little toss. And the whole idea is for people to get hits and have fun. So I go this past off season. And I hear this, this guy comes in. I don't like him from the beginning. As soon as he walks in the door, I, he's got this look that I don't like, right? So I keep one ear on him. There's a jam shot here and a foul ball. So all of a sudden he starts chit chatting, you know, to all the other people. There's a lot of people, a lot of people. There's four teams, and he starts talking about how he's got a little experience and you know, played a little college ball. Played a little ball. Played a little college ball. <laughs> okay. You know, so I'm, I'm not thinking much about the clown until you know yeah. we get down and start playing the game. So he happens to be pitching for one of the teams. He's throwing about 89 miles an hour with a ball to the ladies. Now I'm getting, I'm frustrated. I'm absolutely frosted, and I can't wait to hit. Swing of the miss, and Shaw strikes. Now, let me ask this really quickly. Does he know that you have major league experience, and is he aware of this at this point? You don't care. Don't know, don't care. Don't know, don't care. He, when he started firing them to the wives and the ladies, yeah. I was I, I was beyond myself. You know, so yeah. I, I'm telling people, somebody tell this guy that this is supposed to be a fun game, you know, but he played a little college ball. <laughs> So I get up there, and all I want to do is hit this guy right up the forehead. That's all I want to do is swing and hit a line drive right back through the middle, right off the forehead. 
and I was so out of my stuff that I hit a little dribble in the second base. I'd never been so upset in my life <laughs> since a major league game. <laughs> I had never been so upset. I wanted so badly to hit one right over his dome. And you, you know. dribbled one to second. Oh. So the home run you had was not off him, unfortunately. No, it was like the year before. When oh, we were, okay. You know, just playing fun, fun. You know, <laughs> this game became like brutal. It was. That's, uh, but you know still how bothered guys, about it. You know I can tell. Yeah. Uh, I play a little ball. A little ball. <laughs> Brock Hall waiting on an 0-2 pitch. That'll straighten him up. Needless to say, my friend will not be inviting him again to another. Uh, oh, well, you're game. there. I mean, you, you uh, called no, him a clown. I mean, ball game. Yeah. Chris Capuano and Brian Mitchell both up for New York in the pen. Foul back to the screen. Still one and two. Larry Lucchino, CEO and President Emeritus of the Boston Red Sox here tonight. Two pitch coming up here to Brock Holt. And that is down and in. And in fact, it was so bad that I have a friend who's the police chief up in Rochester, uh, New Hampshire. You know where Rochester is. Yeah. He wanted to arrest the guy, he wanted to put him in handcuffs. He really did. Just he because was, he was that he was. Upset. He was that upset with Wow. Him. Yeah. Two two. And Holt strikes out. Pineda 94 in the fastball. That's back to back K's for Pineda. Two down. Yeah, this is a very strange game. I'll tell you, you know, both guys came out real shaky early in the ballgame. Ten runs total in the first inning, but both have settled down very nicely. And that time the fastball inside by Pineda gets Holt to strike out. So back to back strikeout. Sure, Holt here in the sixth inning. Two down here for Blake Swihart, who has homered a three run shot in the first inning and grounded out. And as he takes a strike call, borderline as Swihart checks with Mike Everett, appeared to be outside. Highest average by a Red Sox rookie catcher since Rich Gedman, who is here with the team. Gedman traveling with the Red Sox here and adding to the staff here for September for Boston. Good to see Getty. No two pitch coming up. And that's why I thought about it, but he lays off. There's Rich Gedman. Did you guys play together at any point? Yes, we did. You did. Yep. Very hard working guy. And he's turned into a very, very good coach. There is strike three as Pineda strikes out the side in succession. Red Sox have a 7 4 lead.
Nissan. Get to Nissan's ride of your life for exciting performance and bonus cash. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Your local New England Ford dealers. The Scion TC. And by the Kia Sorento. That's on to the bottom of the sixth inning for Rick Porcello as he deals with Carlos Beltran, Dustin Ackley, and Chase Headley. That was pitch number 76 of his outing. Beltron one for two in the game and into the shift sharply hit but Pedroia out there will throw out Beltron for the first out here of the sixth inning. The shift worked out great that time. Right now he's ticket as your tickets to all Boston Bruins Boston Celtics and New England Patriots games. Visit aceticket.com for the best seats at the best prices ace ticket it's more than a ticket. One out here in the sixth inning Dustin Ackley the batter. Ackley homering in the first inning, a two run shot off Porcello. Grounded out to second base in the fourth inning. Eightieth pitch. And it's on the ground to short. Xander Bogarts has got it. And there are quickly two outs in the inning. Well, it's time for a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Adam? All right, Adam, thanks very much. This is driven to the left field corner, and Bradley goes over to make the catch again. He has been spectacular in this series and in that left field corner here in New York. Turns to Fenway Park as part of Irish Festival on November the 22nd. For more information on the match featuring Dublin and Galway and the Irish Festival, visit RedSox.com slash Irish Festival. That's on to the seventh inning we go. Seven to four, Red Sox have the lead over the Yankees. And the new pitcher Brian Mitchell into the game here to replace Pineda who went the first six innings of this contest. Devin Marrero leading it off and taking ball one or no he called it a strike. 
19 the parents from Mitchell 0 and 2 5.60 earned run average 27 strikeouts 12 walks opponent sitting at 296. Ball on a strike now to Marrero. Mitchell last working on Sunday against the White Sox closed out the game had a perfect ninth inning. Spent time on the DL with the concussion earlier this year. Yeah, struck in the forehead in a line drive hit by Eduardo Nunez against the Minnesota Twins on August 17th when on the seven day concussion DL. Ended up staying on there though for 10 days. Ended up that he suffered a small nasal fracture. Two two pitch. And the pitch down low three and two. On the ground towards Gregorius at shortstop started back now comes in and makes a good hard accurate throw for the first out of the seventh inning. Well, tomorrow at 6, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. Adam, Heck, and Steve will look back at some of our best moments on the pregame show this season. One down in the seventh, and it brings up Jackie Bradley. 0 for 2. He has flied out to the warning track and left and popped out to third base. They shift on him on the right side. Outfield straight away. Two and zero. Oh. Pineda six innings, seven hits, seven runs. Didn't walk anybody. Struck out four. Gave up six runs in the first. Now Brian Mitchell taking over here in the seventh inning. That's in there for a strike three and one. 97 that time from Mitchell. Line to left field as Bradley takes it the other way for a base hit. His first hit of the night and on with one out. Now Jackie Bradley Jr. making that great play to end last inning out in left field. One out single hard line drive to left field. It's that fastball away goes with it and puts it on a line to the opposite field. One out one on and the top of the order now Mookie Betts. Two hit night, both extra base hits, a double in the first inning, home run in the fifth inning. Quick check on Bradley back to the bag. Outside for ball one. Some drizzling going on there. Calling for a lot of rain here tomorrow. Four game series here between the Red Sox and the Yankees. 1 0 pitch is going to miss up high. 2 0. That's looking down in the direction of Brian Butterfield, third base coach, with a runner at first and one down. One down. Oh, 
On the ground to the backhand goes Headley. Nice pick. Throw to second is not a good throw and safe. At second base is Bradley. It was in the dirt and Ackley tried to dig it out. Could not a possible double play ball, but they get nobody. Everybody's safe. Yeah, I couldn't tell if that ball hit the dirt or Ackley just dropped it. We'll take another look. It looked like one the second baseman could have handled, but didn't. It was a low throw. There's no question about that. Diving a little bit to his right. That ball should have been handled by the second baseman. I mean, he knows there's no chance for a double play on that, so he's going to go out and stretch out like a first baseman to make that catch. I would give the error to the second baseman on that play. Yeah, they are charging the error to Ackley at second base. You're not going to get a double play, so I mean, you got to forget about that and just stretch out like a first baseman to get the force out at second base. So that's a big break for the Red Sox there. First and second with one out and Pedroia now will take a pitch inside for ball one. So Betts reaches on a fielder's choice. Bradley gets a second on the error. That is charged to Dustin Ackley. Two and zero. Oh. Left-hander James Pezos, who worked in last night's game, warming up in the pen. I had away three and zero. Oh. Good velocity at 98 miles an hour, but uh, has not thrown a strike yet to Pedroia. Just with a couple singles tonight, one to left, one to center, wrapped around the ground out to third. He bats with Bradley at second, bats at first, and one out. Strike one. Dustin taken all the way. Three and one. Yankees into the bullpen here in the seventh inning for Brian Mitchell. Foul back, full count. Be sure to follow Nesson on Instagram for behind the scenes photos as the Bruins gear up for their season opener on October the 8th. Follow Nesson today at Instagram.com slash Nesson. Marrero grounded out to shortstop for the first out. Jackie Bradley Jr. with a single to left. Betts reaching on the fielder's choice. Error committed by Ackley, the second baseman. Two on, one out. Runners go on the 3 2, and it's ball four. And down to first goes Pedroia. First walk allowed by Yankees pitching in the game. And that loads the bases with one out. Bases loaded, one down, and Xander Bogart's the batter. He has reached on a fielder's choice, fly to right, grounded into a double play. Reached on the fielder's choice in the first, picked up an RBI, his 81st on the year. All part of that six run first inning tonight for Boston. Strike call. Going hard. He's been 97 98 with a fastball. Not great control with it, but he is throwing hard. Bradley at third. Betts at second. Pedroia at first. Red Sox trying to add on to a 7 to 4 lead here in the top of the seventh inning.
Bogarts up the middle, but there is Ackley. Flips to second for one, on to first. Dug out in the backhand nicely by Bird. Big double play turned by the Yankees. Seventh inning stretch, 7-4 Boston. analysis our experts weekly strategies and injury updates are sure to help you dominate your league this fall visit nesson.com slash fantasy and start chasing that championship well tonight's game summary is brought to you by xfinity as we play along here to the bottom of the seventh inning rick porcello six innings so far six hits four earned runs five k's blake swihart with a three-run home run his fourth of the year mookie betts with a solo shot his 16th michael pineda who gave up six runs in the first inning ends up going six innings giving up seven earned runs he's on the hook right now dustin ackley hit a two-run home run off rick porcello the 25th home run that he has allowed this season and three home runs in the game tonight and the two by the Red Sox Blake Swihart getting a pitch that was inside and taking it uh, into that short porch in right field. Dustin Ackley. Off Porcello. And then Mookie Betts. This is the fifth inning Mookie Betts leading off the fifth where they slide a bad slide at that time and he jumps all over it for the home run so. Ball flying here at Yankee Stadium tonight. Well, Porcello ready to work here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Greg Bird, D.D. Gregorius, and Jacoby Ellsbury expected in the bottom of the seventh. Bird 0 for 2. He's fly to left, fly to center. Five in a row retired by Porcello as he starts this inning. Red Sox in the shift on the right side. And the pitch in there for strike one. Seven runs, eight hits, an error for Boston. Four runs, six hits, an error for New York. On the ground foul, cranked outside to first base. H.B. Hood salutes the Red Sox Foundation's commitment to 4,900 accredited charities throughout New England. Oh, 
One two pitch. And a swing and a miss as Porcello strikes out Greg Bird six strikeouts. Now this has been impressive for Porcello the way he's bounced back from the first inning in this ball game tonight. Most guys would be done. After a bad first inning but both he and Pineda tonight bounce back very very nicely. This is a. Crossing fastball right there that he throws uh, rising a little bit. On Burden staying away from him dead pull hit him. No one down here in the seventh inning brings up D.D. Gregorius who has struck out and been hit by a pitch. Swing and a miss and it's a ball and a strike. So far six strikeouts in the game for Porcello working here to his second batter of the seventh inning as Gregorius gets time from Mike Everett. Two and one now to Gregorius. Came into the game hitting at 266. That's now with Jacoby Ellsbury waiting on deck. Ball three, three and one. Next pitch will be the 90th of the outing for Porcello. And so far, we have not seen any action in the Red Sox pen tonight. Ball four, and down to first base goes Gregorius. So Porcello walks the number nine man, first batter that he's walked in the game. They'll celebrate New England's top athletes, coaches, and teams at the Globies presented by Mercedes Benz with a guest list that includes Doug Flutie, Taylor Twellman, and many more. The Globies is gearing up to be the biggest night in local sports. Tickets start at $75 by yours now at bostonglobe.com slash Globies. One out, Gregorius at first base, and Jacoby Ellsbury, the batter. Ellsbury has double reached on an error and flied out to right. To right field down the line and this ball will be foul. Good amount of foul ground to get down that right field line to where that landed and. Just to the right of the line there for Ellsbury. Now, Jacoby's a very, very tough out for Porcello. Coming into the game, 524 average against Porcello with four career home runs and a double to lead off the game for the Yankees. One for three in the game tonight. Hit that ball hard, but foul. No two. And a check swing there, but he got a piece of it on the bat, fouling it back. Gardner waiting on deck. All four of the Yankees runs coming in the first inning as Ellsbury takes the pitch up top for ball one. Ellsbury rolls it over foul to the end of the dugout. Well, tomorrow at 6.30, don't miss Red Sox game day live presented by DCU. Adam Mack and Steve will preview Wade Miley's start tomorrow against the Yankees. DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Well, the action is Tommy Lane up here in the pen. First action the Red Sox have had tonight. That's outside. Elsbury will see a seventh pitch. Count of two and two. Porcello last time out throwing 111 pitches. There's a grounder foul again. He has thrown at least 110 pitches in three straight games coming into this outing. 
Seven innings, six innings, and seven innings in those three outings. And it was the loss last time out against Tampa Bay. In the dirt, gets away from Swihart, headed to second base is Gregorius. That's interesting. You know, when you have a hitter like Ellsbury at the plate who has incredible numbers against Porcelli, you can really see. You know the advantage toward Ellsbury. I mean, he looks so relaxed in the box. He's following pitches off, and, and, and right here, Porcel is trying everything he possibly can to get this guy out. Tries to change up, he's down in the dirt. Runner gets to the scoring position at second base as it gets by Swihart. Wild pitch gets Gregorius to second base and into scoring position with one out. Ellsbury on the ground right side Pedroia will flip to first to get Ellsbury and Porcello does get Ellsbury out this time as Gregorius takes third with two down. Well that time uh, Porcello winning the battle a long battle against Jacoby and gets a little weak ground ball to second base. Troy had that ball and had to wait for Shaw to get to the bag. This makes a nice little flip to him for the out. So two down, Gregorius 90 feet away. And Brett Gardner, the batter. A couple of hits tonight for Gardner, both singles, both to right field. Also has a stolen base mixed in tonight. Outside 2 and 0. Oh. Last win for Porcello was at Tampa Bay back on the 12th of September. Losses at Toronto and last time out at home against Tampa Bay. Looking for his ninth win tonight. Off balance swing there by Gardner. He's expecting a fastball. Didn't get one. Yeah, good pitch right there on the 2 0 count. Gets the change up, and Gardner can't stay off it. Certainly was never a strike, but uh, the off speed pitch on the 2 0 count really fooled him. Strike two. More action for New York. Justin Wilson warming in the pen. So far in relief, uh, Michael Pineda. Brian Mitchell, first out of the pen, pitched the seventh, got out of a bases loaded one out jam with Bogarts grounding into the double play that ended the top half of this, the seventh inning. 2 2 pitch. And Gardner strikes out. That is seven strikeouts for Porcello. Wraps up the seventh. Red Sox have a 7 4 lead. Let's take a look at the updated Red Sox box score.
Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Your local Subaru dealers. And by Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. Thank you, New England, for 60 great years. 7-4. Red Sox have the lead over the Yankees here in the eighth inning. And pinch hitting for Boston is Josh Rutledge. Adding in David Ortiz's spot is Rutledge. As he will take the strike and it's 0-2. Not sure if uh, David hurt himself any further tonight or why it is Rutledge pinch hitting here in the eighth. As that pitch will miss, did he go? No, says Tim Wilkie, first base umpire. Well, it seemed like there'd be some type of injury, wouldn't it? Because yep. uh, they didn't have the lefty ready to go out there for a tee, so there's no reason for him not to hit in this situation. It's only a three run ball game. As Rutledge strikes out for the first out here of the eighth inning. First strikeout for Mitchell. And it'll bring up Travis Shaw. Shaw reaching on a fielder's choice in the first inning, grounded out to short in the third, struck out in the sixth inning. Shifting here on the right side are the Yankees, and this one grounded foul outside of first. Calling all kids. Only one more chance to see your name in the Boston Globe and on TV. Just visit Nesson.com slash freeze frame to see the photo of the week and send in a clever caption that could make it on the final Nesson Clubhouse show this Sunday. Shaw takes the strike and it is 0 2. And one thing he's done, Mitchell, since being in the ballgame, shown a pretty good breaking ball. Along with a 98 mile an hour fastball. That'll bounce in two and two. Pineda going the first six innings tonight for New York. Seven hits, seven runs, didn't walk anybody, struck out four. And of these seven runs, six of them came in the first inning. Two two pitch. Shaw strikes out. So back to back strikeouts for Mitchell two down here in the eighth inning I had to tell what that pitch was it looked like it might have been a cut fastball something up and away from uh, Travis Shaw. It was 89 miles an hour whatever it was. Yeah it was a cutter. Well, so what do you think of when you think of cutters in this ballpark. Mariano. Yeah. Here and across the street right. <laughs> two down as Brock Holt stands in. Rock has doubled, grounded back to the mound, and struck out. That double drove in a run back in the first inning. A retired number here at uh, Yankee Stadium, Mariano Rivera. Two zero pitch, and Holt sprays it foul down the left field line out of play. Fouled off to the left out of play. And Tommy Lane had been up by himself last inning. Now it is Gene Machi who has joined him in the pen. 103 pitches for Rick Porcello through the first seven innings. It's 
2 2 pitch. And that's going to miss. Full count. Blake Swihart waiting on deck. Red Sox batting with two outs. Bases empty here in the eighth. And there's ball four. Holt draws a two out walk here in the eighth inning. Let's time now to check out the results of tonight's Dunkin' Donuts poll question. We asked, does the new Yankee Stadium offer the same home field advantage as the old Yankee Stadium? And 85% felt no is the answer. Jerry, I think the way that this plan, and don't get me wrong, I like this ballpark a lot, but the way it is structured, everything is back. Yeah. And the old Yankee Stadium, everything was up. Oh, you, could, you could feel the old Yankee, yes. Yankee Stadium shake. I mean, it was, yes. it was one of the greatest atmospheres in all of baseball. And that top deck kind of hung over the bottom deck, and it was, you know, like fans were on top of you, it seemed like here. Yeah, it was a different feeling playing in that ballpark than any other ballpark I ever played in. The buzz was different from the crowd than any other ballpark I ever played in. When that first time you step in a batter's box, the history of the old Yankee Stadium makes your leg shake. Well, falling behind here to Swihart, 2 and 0 oh, went out to talk it over as McCann and Larry Rothschild. Now the pitching coach will join that conversation. Have a son or daughter who wants to learn more about baseball or the Red Sox? Visit NessonClubhouse.com. There's videos, games, and a whole lot more. It's fun, free, and easy to use. Visit NessonClubhouse.com today. So two down Brock Holt at first base and Blake Swihart ahead in the count two and zero. Oh. Back to the screen, two and one. Well, tonight's attendance 38,512, 38,512 for game two of this four game series between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Strange not to see that top deck up there on both the right field line and the left field line not sold out here in a Red Sox Yankees battle. You don't get that playoff buzz, do you? No. Here's a fly ball to right field as back goes Beltron at the wall. It is gone. Blake Swihart with his second home run of the night. This one's a two run shot. It gives the Red Sox a nine to four lead. Home run number five of the season and two tonight for Swihart. What a night for Blake Swihart. Two home runs, five runs batted in in the game. Have a night. Smyhot gets that fastball at 96 up in the zone. Now lefties are pretty generally pretty good low ball hitters, but he takes that high fastball and takes it out of the ballpark. Now Devin Marrero bats after the home run by Swihart. Well, two quick outs in this inning for Mitchell, striking out Rutledge and Shaw, but a walk to Holt, followed by the two run home run by Blake Swihart. Three home runs in the game now for Boston. Now grab ball to third base Headley waits for it and then fires across and it's close but in time to get Marrero two run home run by Blake Swihart Red Sox widen their lead on top nine to four.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Back in New York where the Red Sox have up their lead to nine to four. And Rick Porcello back on the hill to begin the bottom of the eighth inning. Alex Rodriguez stands in and takes ball one. That was pitch 104 for Porcello. There is action behind him. Gene Machi waiting in the pen as Porcello starts the inning. Foul tip by Rodriguez. A Rod tonight has struck out looking, grounded out to third base, and last time up, grounded into a 5 4 3 double play. Foul tipped again, one and two. Seven strikeouts in the game for Porcello. Did walk his first batter in the seventh inning. D.D. Gregorius walking. Four runs he allowed, all coming in the first, and he's been great since. And add another strikeout. That's eight Ks now for Porcello. Now let's take a look at the four strikeouts. So four of the strikeouts for. Porcello tonight. Beltran back in the third inning gets him on a curveball. Then it's McCann on a changeup. Bird on a fastball up and away. And a breaking ball right there. Curveball to Garda. He just threw one by Alex Rodriguez for the first strikeout here in the eighth. One down. Brian McCann, the batter. And has grounded to short, grounded to first, and struck out swinging. They're shifting on him as well, right side of the infield. They got to give Rick Porcello a lot of credit. Very rocky first inning, giving up four runs, including the two run home run by Dustin Ackley, and he settles down. Working here in the eighth with one out. Pitch 1 11. And it's very high for ball two. The New Jersey native pitching here at Yankee Stadium against the Yankees. McCann sends it out to left field, sending Bradley Jr. back to the edge of the track to make the catch for the second out of the eighth. So two way and that'll bring up Carlos Beltran. Beltran with a double in the first inning struck out in the third grounded out in the sixth inning. Late swing and a foul off to the left into the seats. Action for the Yankees right hander Chris Martin up in the pen. Lever Brian Mitchell ends up going two innings of relief. There's a check swing grounder foul and it's 0 and 2. Beltron turns on this but sends it a long way foul down the right field line. Last time Porcello went eight innings was against the Yankees at home back on September the 1st. This one is down the right field line again and foul again. Eight innings, five hits, an earned run, 13 Ks in that performance against New York. This is to right field, and Brock Holt out there in right will make the catch, and Porcello is through eight innings tonight from Yankee Stadium, 9 4 Boston.
Southwest Airlines, book you at Old Fair now at southwest.com. Lightly raining here at Yankee Stadium in New York, 9 to 4. Red Sox have the lead as we head into the ninth inning. New pitcher on for New York as Porcello congratulated by his manager and teammates. Nice effort. Eight innings in the ball game tonight for Porcello. And a chance for win number nine of the season. Chris Martin, the new pitcher for New York. Third of the night into his 23rd game, 0 2, the 5.79 earned run average. 17 strikeouts, four walks, and opponents hitting at 301 against Martin. Jackie Bradley Jr. leading it off here in the top half of the ninth inning. Bradley with a base hit his last time up, a one for three night for the Red Sox left fielder. Line to right field here for Bradley. That's going to get down and go back towards the wall. Trying for second base, and he will get there standing. A leadoff double for Jackie Bradley Jr. A good night for uh, Bradley Jr. A couple of hits, two for four on the night. Some nice defensive plays out of left field, as usual. Slider that's down and in. That's a very good pitch for a left handed to hit, and Bradley hits it well. Takes it right down to the 314 area, bouncing off the wall, and by the time Beltron gets it back in, Bradley's standing in scoring position. Here is Mookie Betts, who has doubled, struck out, homered, and reached on a fielder's choice. Ball one strike here to Betts. Pedroia waiting on deck. Red Sox batting here in the top half of the ninth inning. A five run lead right now. Outside two and one. Three and one out of bets. 95 on the fastball there from Martin missing up top. Three one pitch to bets. And that is in there for a strike full count. Red Sox in double figures in hits in this game with 10. 10 hits, nine runs for Boston. Three home runs in this game. Two for their catcher, Blake Swihart. Home run for Mookie Betts. Mookie hit a solo shot back in the fifth inning and now bats with Bradley at second base. Nobody out here in the ninth. Fly ball down the right field line, foul. Kevin Lomanowitz from Fox 25 giving us the very latest radar wise. And it's still a little left there, it looks like, Jerry. Looks like we're in good shape, Don. Uh, games have called down in Baltimore, Cleveland, 
in Pittsburgh, but uh, we're, we're, I think we're good here. We're good for the rest of the night. Well, at least, till, you know, after the game's over. Close pitch, but call the ball, and it's ball four for Mookie Betts. So the first two have reached here for the Red Sox in the ninth inning. Double and a walk, two on, nobody out, and Dustin Pedroia coming up. He's been on base three times in the game, two singles and a walk for Pedroia. Larry Rothschild on the phone. Strike call in that outside corner, 95 that time and on the corner. First and second, nobody out for the Red Sox in the ninth inning. Gene Machi continues to get ready in the Red Sox pen. There's a fly ball out to left field and Brett Gardner. Gardner will make the catch for the first out of the ninth. Rain falling here now, a little bit harder at Yankee Stadium. Xander Bogart's coming up. Xander 0 for 4 in the game. Grounded into a fielder's choice fly to right. He's grounded into two double plays in this game. And defensively tonight making an error. So it's been a tough night for Xander all the way around. Bogart's taking the strike. Pineda going the first six innings tonight for New York, giving up seven runs. Brian Mitchell, two innings, two runs. Did he go? Yes, he did. Tim Welke said he offered. Xander doesn't agree, and he's down 0 and 2. Take a look from the side. I think he did go. Oh, guys can't believe it. Xander fouls it straight back, still 0 and 2. Rutledge waiting on deck. He had batted for David Ortiz in the eighth inning and struck out. On the ground down the third baseline, a foul ball. Still 0 and 2. So Bradley back to second. Betts back to first with one out here in the ninth. Got plenty of speed on the bases for the Red Sox between Bradley and Betts. Any ball in the gap could score two runs. Xander fouls it off. A piece of himself there and grabs at his leg. 0 and 2. Been banged up tonight. Hurt his back a little bit on a dive earlier in the ball game on a defensive play. Now this foul tip off the back of his leg. It's a strange place to get it.
on the ground softly in towards third base Headley will bare hand and not do it cleanly drops the ball and everybody's safe. Now Bogots with that base hit now seven away from 200 on the season. Headley comes in the only way he possibly could have a chance was with the bare hand but even if he makes this play I doubt that he gets Xander at first base. Do or die. You know the guy's got speed running down the line, so that's the only opportunity you have to go bare hand, and I still don't think if he comes up clean, he gets Bogarts. So base is loaded with one out, and it brings up Josh Rutledge. Rutledge pinch hitting in the eighth, struck out swinging. One of the two strikeouts that Brian Mitchell had while he was in there. In there for strike one. Pineda on the hook in this game came in at 12 and 8. Yankees with action in the pen. Nick Goody warming. On the ground towards shortstop. Gregorius to second for one on to first it is not going to be in time and a high throw as in from third base scoring is Bradley and the Red Sox make it 10 to 4. So Rutledge reaching at first base and picks up an RBI. Hey, Ackley at second base has not had a real good night. Remember he dropped the ball earlier in the game and this time he makes a very high throw and it's almost like he let the runner intimidate him going into second base. There's D.D. Gregorius backing up a little bit, but watch watch the slide by Bogots. He puts his hands up, and that almost costs, I think that costs Ackley to throw that ball high at first base. First and third shift on, and Travis Shaw has to back out of the way of a pitch up and in. Gregorius, the shortstop, is in short right field. That's where the Yankees have done the shift for the most part tonight, especially on Shaw. On the ground right side as it turns out Ackley will throw out Shaw and in the inning Red Sox had a run we head to the bottom of the ninth, 10 to 4 Boston.
bottom of the ninth inning back in New York. Let's take a look at the Toyota play of the game and uh, one of the two home runs for Blake Swihart in this game. Back in the first inning for Swihart, a three run home run as the Red Sox score six times in that first inning against Michael Pineda. That's been a big night for Swihart. G. Machi into the game for Boston. Their second pitcher of the night. His 24th appearance, 1 0 with a 5.31 earned run average. 17 strikeouts, 7 walks, and opponents hitting at 231 against Machi. Well, eight innings tonight from Rick Porcello in the game. Ends up allowing a total of six hits to New York. Four runs, all of the runs coming in the first inning, and then really settled down. Went on to walk a batter and strike out eight in his performance. Dustin Ackley leading it off and taking ball one. Ackley with a home run in the first inning off Rick Porcello in a two run shot. Tenth home run of the year. Two and oh. There's a strike two and one. Machi giving up a solo home run on Wednesday night against Tampa Bay. Then in a very strange situation, the next batter was Steven Souza Jr. and he threw a breaking ball and went behind him and he was actually ejected from the game. Yeah, that was uh, kind of a really bad call, I thought, by the umpire. I, I know they have, uh, if they think it's deliberate that you're throwing at somebody's head, they certainly can throw you out of a ball game, but that was a breaking ball. Two twos on the ground right side. Pedroia plays the two hopper and throws out Ackley for the first out of the ninth. One down for Machi, and that'll bring up Chase Headley. Well, if the Red Sox can hold on here, Jerry, this will be the first time this year that they have won five games in a row. And really, the reason for that, Don, has been pitching. It started off tough tonight for Porcello, giving up four in the first, but after that, he just shut him down. Fly ball to left field. Jackie Bradley Jr. on the move. Back to the track to make the catch again. Second time Headley has taken one to the track in left field, but second time the Bradley's been back there, two down. Brings up Greg Bird with two outs here in the ninth. Bird has flight out to left, flight out to center, and struck out swinging. One pitch outside, and it's one and one. End of the shift of the Red Sox on the right side again. Pedroia in short right. And this will get through the shift on the right side into right field. So Bird aboard with a two out single off Gene Machi. And that'll bring up Didi Gregorius, the number nine man at shortstop. In there for strike one. Don't hold Bird on at first base with two down here in the ninth inning. And a swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Good split thing at fastball by Machi. Never really in the strike zone, but chased by Gregorius. See the split grip and would never really got above the knees and finished uh, in the dirt. Rain coming down much harder now here at Yankee Stadium. 0-2 pitch. 
And Gregorius strikes out the Red Sox win, winning five in a row for the first time in 2015. And the Red Sox have taken the first two games of this four game series against the Yankees and tonight beat them 10 to 4. Big night for Blake Swihart with two home runs. We will step aside and come back with more from Yankee Stadium right after this.